So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video. And in today's video, what I wanna talk about is some iPadOS 15 features that go relatively under the radar and unnoticed, but they're actually features that are extremely useful. We all know some of those big headlining features, like the new FaceTime features, the focus modes, the app library coming over to the iPad Pro, and also floating widgets throughout the entire screen. But like I said, in this video, we're gonna talk about 10 features that go relatively unnoticed that I think you guys should know about. But before we get started, leave a comment down below with one of your favorite iPadOS features that you think goes relatively unnoticed that you use pretty much on a daily basis. Always curious to know. And if you guys learn one new feature, that's the goal for this video. So without further ado, let's pop up the iPad screen and see exactly what we got going on. And we're gonna go from 10 to one, so kind of like the least useful one or the one that kind of maybe a lot of people know to one of the more unique ones that I was able to find inside of iPadOS 15. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody. We're gonna pull up the iPad screen right here. And if you guys are curious, I am rocking the Knoopsie wallpaper. If you guys do wanna check it out, I'll leave it down in the description. We got my personal icon pack on the bottom to get those dark icons. And then these are my main widgets. So we have a weather widget, my investment widgets, and then my spike mail widget right there. So let's get started with number 10. So like I said, we're gonna go from maybe the most common that you might know already, but hopefully you still don't, to the number one, which is one of the more unique ones that I was able to find out. So number 10 has to be inside of the photos and it has to do with Siri. So I'm not actually gonna say that works. I don't wanna ignite anybody's iOS device, but if you hold down and get Siri involved, but you can actually use Siri to send actual photos and videos directly with your voice over iMessage. All you have to do is summon Siri and say, send picture to Ben. Ready to send it? And then there you go. You saw that we actually got a little screen right there, which again, helps us infer and kind of foreshadow what floating windows could be like, which is one thing. But then two, it's nice to know that you can actually access Siri to then send photos and not just send normal voice messages or you know voice to text messages. So, so that's gonna be feature number 10. Feature number nine is actually with the new app library. And before I continue, I am on iPadOS 15.3 beta one, but all of these features, as long as you're on iPadOS 15 or higher, so 15.0, 15.1, 15.2, and those are all public releases, you'll be good to go with every single one of these features. So I do get this question a lot for feature number 10, and that has to do with the app library. So with the app library, what Apple brought it over from iOS 14 to then iPadOS 15, you now have the ability to grab an application, and then instead of deleting it, but you wanna remove it from your home screen, you can actually edit your home screen and then remove the application from the home screen itself, but the application is still downloaded fully on your iPadOS device. But then people ask me a lot, hey, how do I actually fully delete the application if it's not on my home screen anymore? So if you go over here, you can actually go into your app library, grab any one of these. So if I wanna grab Airbnb, hold it down, and then from here, you can actually delete it, or you can even add it to home screen itself, so hold it down again and add to home screen. So that's feature number nine, being able to delete and move stuff from the app library into your home screen. And the next one we're gonna talk about is actually inside of Apple's native mail client. So we go into mail, we actually knew that we can take full screen images and then also by full screen, I mean not just the screen that shows up here, but if you have documents that are multiple pages long, you can actually do a full screenshot with iPadOS. But what's cool is for instance, if you try to take a screenshot and go in here, you then see that with the screenshot, you still get the sidebar for the inbox, you still get all this, but if I go into full page, you can see that it turns into a nice PDF document. So it gets rid of the sidebar and actually lets you scroll through the entire thing. So this is from YouTube. Shout out to you guys for 1.2 million minutes watched, insane. But again, that's a nice feature. So if you have content inside of an email that you wanna screenshot and send over in a PDF format, but don't wanna have the ugly sidebar over here where the inbox is, then by all means, all you have to do is again, take a screenshot just like normal, either with the hold button and the volume up button or with the Apple Pencil and then press on full page on the top and then you get this. And then again, you can still annotate it, edit it, do whatever you need with it and then save it as a PDF. So that's gonna be feature number eight. Another cool one that came into the control center is actual sound recognition. So I think Apple purchased Shazam a couple of years ago or something like that, or maybe they just partnered up with them. But you see that I have a Shazam logo down here on the bottom left of my control center. And the way to access that is very simple. You go into the control center, go, or go into your settings, go to control center, and then by default, it's not gonna be in there, so it's gonna be down here in this plus section. But you can see that I do have music recognition with that Shazam logo. And we're gonna try it out right now live with a Justin Bieber song. So all you have to do is turn it on. So I'm gonna mute that just so I don't get copyrighted, but you can see that the song was popped up there in my settings and you can click on that 
and then it'll tell you to open the song inside of Shazam and then it'll tell you where to find it on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever streaming service you use. So that's a cool little feature that I thought was worth sharing. Maybe you guys didn't know about that. So that's a feature number seven, built-in native sound recognition powered through Shazam on the iPad Pro. Another interesting one is actually an iMessage. So this is something that I found out by accident actually. So if we go into my messages and you can actually drag and drop full messages instead of copy and pasting them. So what I can do is grab this right here, move it, go to another chat, drop it in there, and then you can see that it's right there. So being able to drag and drop messages, not just images and videos, but even direct messages from one chat into another chat in iMessage, I think that's a feature that goes overlooked. And it definitely beats like highlighting it, copying it, then pasting it into the other one. So that's gotta be feature number six, being able to move text from one iMessage chat into another one. So another interesting feature inside of the actual Photos application, which I didn't know you could actually do, is actually search by what device type the photo was taken on. So if I go into the search, so if I go into search and maybe type in the Pixel, let me see if I have any Pixel photos in here. So if I type in Pixel, Google Pixel 6 Pro, you can see that I have one photo taken by the Google Pixel 6 Pro, which is my dog in here. So that's really cool to see. So if you have, or if you're a photographer and you have, let's say a Sony camera, a Canon camera, you use your iPhone for some B-roll shots, you have a Pixel 6 Pro, and you wanna organize things based on what device you took that image on or video, you can just search it, then kind of group everything together, put them in their own little individual folders, and you're good to go. So being able to search photos based on the device that you took that photo on, I think it's pretty efficient and pretty clutch also by Apple. So again, these are all features that Apple doesn't really promote. They'll just put into the system to make your life that much more efficient. So another cool one that I found actually on Twitter is being able to add little icons on the status menu with focus modes. So I know focus modes are made for, again, for people to put in focus modes and kind of different do not disturb modes. But if we go into settings, go into focus right here, and you just create another focus mode, custom, you can actually pick little icons. So let's say I wanna pick an icon you know, like, uh, let's say this little screen right here, I want it to be in blue. Say, we'll just call it hello. So you make sure that you put calls from everyone because you don't want this to be an actual focus mode. You literally just want to add an icon that's visible on there for a little customization. So we'll press allow on here, and then you're going to want to add all of your applications. So add app, you know, click on all these are the ones that you use most often. Press allow, press done. We'll turn it on over here, and then you can see that on the top right, that little icon shows up. So if you create a focus mode that really doesn't block anything or anyone or any application and doesn't mess with your workflow and you just wanna have a little icon up there in the status bar in the top right, by all means you can do that. So a little customization action doesn't hurt anybody. Another interesting one which really helps with search inside of Safari is quick Safari search. So first off, go into your settings menu, go to Safari, and then this quick website search, make sure it's turned on. So what that allows you to do is actually go into Safari and if you're looking for something specific, right? So if I wanna go on ESPN, but look at stuff that's related to the Miami Dolphins, all I do is type in ESPN.com and then put a space and just type in Miami Dolphins. And then I'm gonna be taken to only ESPN links that have Miami Dolphins related to it. So if I wanna go in here, press the ESPN Miami Dolphins, it'll take me right there. This is taking me to the ESPN application or try to. But you can see that it takes me to an article based on Miami Dolphins and you know, Tua Tonga Vailoa. I think this is kind of mean, you know, state of Dolphins offense, you know, two a time. I'm still a believer in two if you guys are Miami Dolphins fans or NFL fans in general, but that is a cool way to actually search for content that you know comes from a reputable source. So if you want to do maybe the example that Apple gives is the Wiki Einstein. So if I just type in Wiki and then do Einstein, then you're going to get a Wikipedia page solely based on Einstein and all of his different biography, education, discoveries, all that good stuff. So it's just an easier way to use the Safari search engine to give you exactly what you want from that source that you're looking for, which I think is a great little feature. And then the very final feature that I do wanna show off is this idea of live text. So live text was brought to iPadOS 15. So it works in situations like this where it does have a dog right here. You can look it up. It'll look up exactly what kind of dog it is. If there's text on a photo, you can highlight that text. If you find something that's handwritten, it'll do the same thing. But one cool one that I found is actually inside a spotlight. So if we go into spotlight, then just press on the empty toolbar, the search bar, you can scan text, and then you get this cool little screen on the bottom of your iPad. This works with iOS as well, but if you bring it over, let's say to here, to let it scan everything over here, I wanna click there, then in the spotlight search, it populates with all of that information. So I can press insert, and then it starts to look for that information that I want. So I like how Apple's implementing kind of all these floating windows, and I hope that means they're foreshadowing into what a world could be like with iPad OS 16 with a bunch of different floating windows doing multiple things at once. Because you can see with the M1 processor, it's handling everything perfectly. 
But let's put away the iPad. That was my number one feature. I don't think a lot of you guys knew that, especially that it brought down that new window on the bottom. Definitely check that out. But that is going to do it for this video, everybody. Like I said, I think there was like eight, nine, maybe ten features that I showed off. Comment down below how many of them you knew, how many of them you didn't know, which one was your favorite one. Always curious to know because, again, I want to make sure that you guys are learning something new with every video. Hopefully, you got at least one feature that you didn't know existed. My favorite one is that scan live text to be able to just scan anything in a pickle whenever you want to look something up and look it up within Spotlight Search because I am a big fan of Spotlight whenever I need to get some quick information. So overall, iPadOS 15 is maturing over time. I know it's still not that computer replacement that a lot of people want. It's more of a computer supplement or a supplement to your current computer setup. I use it as a computer. I know a lot of people that do. I was even at the Apple store the other day, you know, talking to somebody that was looking to buy an iPad and I told them I'm like, hey, I switched to full iPad Pro. Yeah, I got my MacBook Air for the 10% or 5% of things that I can't do on the iPad. But again, if I was doing YouTube full time, the iPad Pro would be more than enough to handle everything I do. But that's going to do for this video. Like I said, hopefully you learned something new. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and comment some video ideas down below. Always curious to know what you guys are looking for. And let me know if you want some more accessory reviews because we've got a bunch of new iPad Pro accessories that I'm going to touch on in some future videos. But until next time, peace. I'm out of here.